Welcome to the Road Dog Project. This is Don Muskies and my canine co-host, Leon. Thanks to celebrity coaches, we're hitting the road and talking to the pros that make concerts and live events happen. If you'd like to support the channel, we'd appreciate a big thumbs up, and please enjoy the episode. On this episode, Ralph Mastrangelo, a veteran in the concert touring industry now for over 40 years. As a director of touring, Ralph made groundbreaking contributions to several major production companies that forged the Nashville touring production community. Before that, he had a long touring history as a front of house audio engineer for some of the most notorious rock acts of the 80s and 90s. Now he is the founder and president of his own China Shop Entertainment, a new entertainment consultancy and production provider. Ralph remains active in the Nashville music community and also serves on the board of directors of the Country Music Association. From New York to Nashville, from audio engineer to business CEO, he is Ralph Mastrangelo. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Uh, I have the first question for you is, if I had come to you at 1980 and said, uh, Ralph, one day you're going to be on the board of directors of the CMA, what would you have said to me? <laughs> I wouldn't have said anything. I just would have walked away. <laughs> yes. what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. You're from New York City. Yes. What part, what part of town? I was born in Manhattan. I grew up in Brooklyn. I went to high school and middle school in Long Island awesome. and then joined the circus. <laughs> I joined the circus. And uh, you went to school uh, there in New York? Well, Center for the Media Arts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you went there, what, was your, what were you thinking? What was your goal? What were you going after? Uh, there were never any goals or plans yeah. pretty much the whole life. Yeah. Um, I was I already had my company started, which was a couple of sound systems that I built and bought a bunch of gear and, and threw stuff together. And I had uh, you know two clubs in New York that I had systems in, and I was you know working my ass off doing that. And bars closed at 4 a.m. in New York, still do, right? So you finish up at 4 a.m. The band would stop. You pack up your gear. I would drive back to my parents' house, take a shower, jump on a train, go into New York go to school I just thought it was the right thing to do it was yeah. recording and even though I was already doing this I just thought I don't know there was there was nothing else around there's yeah. this there was you yeah. know this wasn't even a thing yeah. right right exactly production yeah so it was in the same building as uh, Jermaine School of Photography which was a really big um, photography school yeah I believe it's still around um, and right next to FIT Fashion Institute of Technology which was really cool for us at that time <laughs> yeah um, and it just, you know, felt like the right thing to do. So I was uh, sleeping four 45-minute shifts a day on a train and working and going to school. Yeah. When you finished up there, did you already, did you know what your next move was going to be? Once again, it was never really a plan. Yeah. I just yeah. really dug what I yeah. did. Um, I never really even planned to have this company. One day I was just like, wow, I've got like three sound systems and, and I'm keep them busy working that know? was that master sound yeah okay. yeah okay <laughs> for lack of a better name yeah no. yeah and it was there was never any real plan it's uh you know i had this uh, i'm working with all these bands a friend of mine uh said hey you're a really good sound man yeah. uh you want to work with this band and and i mixed this band and had a uh, record on atlantic records and i went on the road with them that was and then my company went to shit because because you were nobody to handle were, it yeah yeah Tough to do. And then from there, you made your way to Florida. What what took you to Florida? Um, the little bit of time off that I had, I just oh. wanted to be on a beach. That oh, I didn't it. know. Oh. Okay, so then tell me, you know, coming from New York City, it was a lot of rock acts that was that was keeping you busy, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was all um, the like New York tri-state area bar scene, band scene was. Yeah. Uh, bands like Twisted Sister, who yeah. still played in bars, um, yeah. Zebra. It was a lot of big. They were, as they were coming up? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was seven nights a week. There were 2,000 people in a dozen different bars yeah. within you yeah. know, a 20-mile radius. Yeah. It was a pretty intense scene. Yeah. Uh, different than the L.A. scene because um, people were actually making money. Right, the bands that were actually making big money, yeah. just doing bars. Okay, so then what got your attention? What, what, how did you end up in Nashville? What was the first thing that um, ended up bringing you this way? It's it's a two-parter. It's I'm, I met a I met a woman, Penny, who you know. Okay. Um, 
we met when I was on tour in Dallas. We moved to Florida, and then you know I would go away. This is how we made a living. Yeah, sure. And the year prior to us meeting, I did an Ingve Malmsteen tour with McBride when he was still in Wichita, and we met and. I, we were diff- in different places. He was a very responsible business owner, and I was out of my mind, right? So we were friendly, but not super tight. Um, I had called him to bid in a couple of tours. I uh, got him to do Dwight Yoakam. Yeah. Um, so we got a little bit tighter, and then we were, we were talking one day, and uh, I said, man, you know, I really love this woman. And, you know, and uh, he just said, move to Nashville. He said, you can be on the road and be home. It's Weekend Warrior stuff. And he yeah. just kind of gave me yeah. the yeah. you know, the bullet points of how it worked. And I was, I called Penny one day. I said, look, pack the shit. Yeah. Uh, meet me in Nashville around here. Find a place to stay. Yeah. I'll get off the bus, which I did. at Shoney's at the Mombrian parking lot. I got off. She met me there, and I lived in Nashville. And it was purely because we wanted to be together. Yeah. And this was the place that we could. Yeah. So uh, here we are. Let's, let, let's, let's get into the to the nitty gritty of what's happening right now. Tell me about your January, February, March. Tell me, tell me your progression of what, how things came to you. Well, I'm gonna back up a little bit because what happened was for um, 25 years or so, I was making a steady paycheck between Claire and then subsequently VER. Yeah. Um, VER thing went away. I got involved with um, a, a venture with Derek Featherstone with Ultrasound, uh, which we can touch on later, but it was, it was good. So that thing came to an end, and I was in the process of putting something together, which is China Shop Entertainment, which was a freelance um, production consulting yeah. business yeah. using my 40 yeah. years worth of sure. you know yeah. bopping around the world yeah. to help companies, either business development or product development or what have you, whatever I could bring to the table. So this was the, you know, four or five months into doing this thing. And I had, I had a good year that was going to really start to uh, pick up steam in April. Uh, Fawcett completely shut off as it did for everybody else in our industry in March. I think that uh, most everybody I've talked to, this would have been a pretty serious, uh, this would have been a one of the busiest years uh, yes. in terms of schedule opportunities. Let's uh, let's go back to uh, happier times when, when <laughs> you 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 spent a good deal of time on the road with some of the you know some some serious acts. You and I met on the Dwight Yoakam tour. Yes. Um, what do you what do you remember most about that tour? Oh, you know I've, I I always choose to have good memories of things. I really like Dwight as a person. Uh, one-on-one, yeah. but he has a trail of bodies behind him. But he, he goes on late, right? Let's just face it, right? He will make the opening act who, you know, folks at home yeah. to no, no. Yeah. Um, you know, we show up, and even though we do this every night, it's a different building every night. It's yeah. different challenges. So you have yeah. to kind of do a sound check and make sure everything works. Uh, and Mr. Yoakum would leave the city the night before whenever he felt like it, which was usually around when doors were supposed to open for the next <laughs> show um (laughs) and nobody could do anything uh until he got there and he did his little walkthrough um and that that's still happens to this day and it's really unfortunate but that's just the way the guy's wired and people you know is famous for that um so we had a lot of uh a lot of apologizing to do and did whatever we could do to make life not suck so bad for um the support acts and ourselves you know uh but you know i i I really loved mixing him. The band was amazing. He's an interesting guy. I, I always dug it, but um, you know, there's there's more than just the music sometimes. Right? Was was that was that like the first uh, country country tour that you did? Yeah, it, it was funny. I really um, I bought probably two what you would call country records if you were a rock guy back in the day when they came out, which was uh, Yoakum record, Guitars and Cadillacs, and then uh, Steve Earle, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we considered that country Edgy, yeah and I, and I dug it and I was bopping at the time back and forth between um uh god who was it lynch mob maybe like you know a rock band and yeah. and, and Yoakum and yeah. I was kind of going back and forth and I had taken some of my crew from the rock world to, to Yoakum and vice versa yeah, yeah and uh we were just having a big old time you know absolutely as they say well I came out on that with the opener Susie Boggus yeah 
Uh, with Steve I, Emily? Yeah, yeah. So I think it was about a month into it already. And by the time I got there, it was there was already there was already lots of stories when I got there. <laughs> and it was a big adventure. And I, I want to say that we did a year, a year and a half, something like that on that. Yeah, it was this, a long time. This this time, mm-hmm. it was the tour. This yeah. time record. Um, so I come out there and um, I see you out in front of the house. And, and I'm going, that guy... It looks like he just stepped out of Anthrax or, or, or Manowar or something. You could have substituted for one of those guys. I think I had done an Anthrax tour just off of one of those legs. Seriously, I have to look at my, yeah. my suck at dates. <laughs> but, yeah. So that was a country country tour, but boy, it was it was about as rock as it could be. You know, and uh, It's funny, the first rehearsal, uh, this guy named Steve Fortney, who's no longer with us, he, was, um, he worked for Bob Seger back in the day. Um, I had known him when he was in like a local in Milwaukee, and I knew he, he had worked for Prince. He was a real guitar tech, and I yeah. hired him to do a George Lynch run. Yeah. And we became good buds, and he said to me one day, kind of, I think he already had it planned, but he said, you need to mix Yoakum. I'm like, I'd love that, right? Yeah. yeah. So I get a phone call, I fly into LA, I think it was Mates or Third Encore or something, going to rehearsals, and you know, I kind of get some sounds, Nobody's talking to me because I look like I looked, right? This big rock guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Don't want to yeah, get exactly. near me. Exactly. They do a run through and Dwight kind of get introduced. He goes up on stage and, and does a number, stops eight bars in. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> I just kind of looked at him. He said, bring the drums up a lot. And I just went inside. Fuck yeah. Because <laughs> he wanted a rock guy. Yeah. That's why I was there, right? That's and awesome. I, and I had... Yeah. Just thought, ooh, this is what it should be. Yeah, you're no toning it back. And he wanted exactly what I was yeah. n- normally bringing, which yeah. most of the time was too much. And I knew it, but that's what the artist wanted. Sure. So I had to present what he wanted, which yeah. was a little more metal yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> than yeah. his audience yeah. wanted. Yeah. yeah. But that was, a, that was a killer band, too. That was some serious uh, musicians. Serious musicians. A lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, know, you and I both have transitioned from you know, out of audio world a little bit into mm-hmm. other roles and things like that. You've done a lot of stuff that I can't speak to in terms of uh, managing these companies and strategic, being strategic and building them. And, you know, and, and when I was talking about MD and Claire and VER, I mean, I think you had a big hand in really uh, carving out the landscape of the production world here in Nashville anyway. That's a whole different, you know, it's a different side of the brain and things like that from standing yeah. at the console um what what uh what drives you in that role what what gets you going and that sort of thing is it the competitiveness of, of for, uh like dealing with the competitor because here especially when you have a whole hotbed of artists a lot of production companies that have gear mm-hmm. and they're all clamoring and especially back at that time like in the 90s that's when things were really Yes. I think, yeah. I mean, it's 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 it seems to have settled down now to me a little bit. But at that time, so many acts, and you had to figure out how to be competitive and not give it away. And there's so many acts, and a um, lot of lot of good companies here with good gear. Yeah. So, what do you think has, uh, you know, been been the thing that has kept you on top, really, of those those companies and driving those driving those things and, and keeping those clients and things like that passion and respect okay i really dig what i do i always did yeah. and i was in the right place at the right time mcbride is a really interesting guy and he the way he operates which you know his slogan right which is either you rock or you suck which extrapolated yeah really is i'm going to give you all the rope you can hang yourself or you can lasso a whole bunch, yeah. right? And um, he allowed me and everybody else to just do our thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, it was an incredible yeah. environment. And yeah. we were in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And I feel like we just worked really hard and we listened. And we were a band of um, people that were in it and doing it. So we were just serving ourselves. Right. Like, what would you want? How do you want to operate? Yeah. So there was the commerce part, but it was never about chasing the money. It was always about just doing something a little bit different or better. Now, everybody had great product and had great people and worked really hard. Yeah. 
Um, but we just had this little magic sauce, you know, yeah. and it really wasn't about giving it away. I mean, everybody at some point you subsidize. I call it picking racehorses. Yeah. You know, um, and a ton of country artists that um, I've, I'm still friends with to this day that you get them, you know, when, when Dirks used to come, you know, I first met him, I said, you're, you're, you're an amazing guy. Like, what do you need? Yeah. And I said, I'm going to give you a microphone. And you come with Jake, the dog, and the, to, to MD, yeah. and I give him a microphone every week, you yeah. know, and you just kind of do those things. Yeah. And it's care. Sure. Um, yeah. And it usually pays off. Yeah. That's the thing. It's the difference. Everybody has the gear. Everybody has the stuff. But it, it does come down to the people and the, and the relationships you build, you know. Well, it, uh, up until a recent time, I think that really mattered. It's it's a different landscape now. It is. We never looked at um, return on investment. You know, all that stuff matters. Trust me. I mean, there was definitely business acumen yeah. that was being you know administered. Oh, for we sure. We were paying attention, but that was never. Um, that wasn't what was driving the ship. Right. So with uh, China Shop, mm -hmm. it's more of a consulting thing. And, and kind of a whatever you need in, in terms of live production? Yeah. So the China shop thing um, was, uh, okay, how do I monetize my experience in the production world? Which um, yeah. turned out there were, uh, I had um, five clients lined up and it was cool. I was doing some business development, um, uh, consigliere stuff, just yeah. trying to drive Sure. Sales um, and and just whatever the particular owners needed, right? Yeah. Um, and it was working. It was good. Yeah. Customizing know? it for whatever they need. I'm, I'm looking to pivot a little bit, um, and I'm, I guess you know, a few yards down the field in uh, artist management, and okay. Um, any which, new any new artists? No, not necessarily yeah. new artists. Okay. Um, I've got a. Uh, a magician, sleight of hand oh, um, wow. performer that's really cool that I happened upon uh, not too long ago. And there's there's plenty of entertainers out there that need representation that don't necessarily have to be the next um, yeah. yeah, whoever. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, and magicians can do a lot of different things. They don't have to necessarily have huge audiences and stuff. You can go to a lot of different uh, kind of venues and stuff. You ever done uh, the House of Cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a pretty cool spot. I took the kids there. It's actually really cool. They do a cool yeah. brunch there. Yeah. Family, yeah. So that's another thing. So you have two boys. How old are your boys now? Yeah, six and eight. Man. Valor just turned eight. Yeah. Wow. That's I lo awesome. love it. Yeah, man. Yeah. The, I, the, your uh, posts, I can tell you're having a great time. And what about animals? You don't have any animals at home, do you? No, you know what? I've always had animals. Okay, but, that's what um, I thought. The last couple of years, just because I'm literally traveling constantly yeah. um, up until this thing happened. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, the boys might want to get something, but managed right. to get through this far without. Yeah. Well, it's the same for me. I mean, I had it, it didn't make any sense. I haven't had a, uh, a dog in eight years. But when I figured out this year that I wasn't going anywhere, that's when I went and found this guy. Yeah. Uh, I would have never done it otherwise because it just doesn't make any sense. I'm just never home. Yeah. And, uh, and now I kind of like, I don't know what I would have done without him. You know what I mean? It's like. Just, uh, they're like, just the best companions. You know? I got close a couple times. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, uh, buses. We were talking earlier. You had a had a little bit of a, a flashback. Yeah, you know, it's um, there's nothing like it, right? Right. Exactly. I back a long, long time ago. You might not even remember this, but Pro Walkmans. Remember those? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you could record on them. Yeah, yeah. So record shows on them, but I I recorded. Um, uh, you know, a 90 minute cassette, uh, 45 minutes worth of engine noise. And that's how I used to go to sleep oh, off nice. tour. I'd yeah. put it under my pillow, yeah. play it with the, the built in speakers, yeah. and that, you know, that would put me to sleep until we were, I was in Europe with Yoakum and we got in a bus wreck. And I never slept in a bus the same. Oh, man, that's scary. Yeah, and it ruined it for yeah. me, which sucked. But I've never had, to, I've had some, I think some, you know, some scary times, but. No, it's very comforting when you get used to it. Yeah. And I've, I've told many people, you know, it's like when you go home after coming off the road, it's hard to sleep because yeah. you don't have that vibration and stuff. It's nothing like it. When you're, uh, when you were traveling then and when you're traveling now, what's your, what's your food indulgences? indulgences? Uh, it's all based on where I am. Yeah? Yeah. Go for the local. Yeah, thing. totally. Yeah. And do you cook? I can. I 
don't really. I'm, <laughs> I'm that? I'm not a planner. Like I can do stuff for other people, but yeah. I I'm just I work off the force. You know, it's like if I'm yeah. hungry, I go eat. I know I can't think that far in advance. I got you. I got you. Heads all over the I place. See. In New York City, since you know the landscape, what 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 do you recommend? You know, what, what's what's your are you a pizza guy? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You can get good pizza everywhere nowadays, and it's it's become a lot different it's sometimes it's vibe because you can get great sushi great pizza great almost great everything everywhere but it's the the places that you've been to that you have these great memories like san francisco brandy hose is this little hunan place that george geranius turned me on to it on an anthrax tour in wow. 1985 or something like that <laughs> uh it's super spicy medium is hot um mcbride goes there i turned him on to it it's like wow. one of his favorite places just little you know yeah little dump that's just awesome that's the best those are the best yeah and in new york's just you know there's so many amazing restaurants and it's all where, where you are and kind of yeah. what you're you know, what part of town yeah that sort of thing. yeah and so one of the things like that i like sharing is you know, with the outsiders of our business is just the, the camaraderie when we tour together and things like that whether you're on the same bus or not you and i traveled next to each other we eat next to each other we we, we grind through ungodly hours and that sort of thing. And so you build this brotherhood. You bring this connection yes. and relationship. And then and, it, and it's really kind of uh, abrupt. You know, you're in a tour and then you don't see each other for months or years or whatever. And it's, it's, it's jarring sometimes, you know. Uh, but if you don't see that, per- if you could, and you know this, if you spent two weeks on a tour with somebody, yeah. and the harder it is, the deeper the bond always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You might not see him for 20 or 30 years. You see that person, you're going to hug him. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, totally. there's not a Yeah. And laugh. And yeah. I don't care how much crap you went through, you're going to laugh about it. Well, absolutely. Anytime I've ever been through something trying, I would just always say, and again, I a little bit of experience through going through those things. This is going to make a great story. The harder it is, you know, and I, I, you have a list. I've got an enormous yeah. list of those, like, Oh, I can't wait till this is over. This is how am I going to do this? And in, it's the bond you build with the people you go through it with, and in the, the memories. That's what this is going to be. Yeah. That's what I keep saying. That's getting me through. It's going to be a great story someday. I Absolutely. can't wait to be able to get through it, look at the back end, and go. I was that close to yeah. living under a bridge. I yeah, was that yeah, close to yeah. you know. Well, listen, Ralph. So glad that you were able to do this. In other times, I mean, probably uh, you know, early in the year or even late last year. I probably wouldn't even be able to get you to do this because it's just, you know, too busy. And I would have been too busy. But thanks for doing this. Uh, he is Ralph Mastrangelo. He is, uh, again, a fixture in the uh, Nashville production community. Thanks so much for doing this. My pleasure. Thank you. Right. Yep. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give us a thumbs up and we welcome your comments. Check out more of the Road Dog Project here on YouTube follow on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Come on, Leon.